Hey guys, it's Matt Holquist here with QuickBooks University. Hey, I wanted to put together this video to show you uh, the top three mistakes that people make when they use QuickBooks. At least in my mind, I see this all the time with clients and other people. And uh, just putting together this video to help you avoid some of those mistakes. Uh, so, and for all the videos that we have on QuickBooks, head over to qbuniversity.org. Got a lot of great videos there, 38 of them actually, to show you how to use QuickBooks step by step. Uh, and this video will show you the top three mistakes that I think people make and how to avoid them. So enjoy it. All right, so here we go. We're in QuickBooks here at the home screen, and these are the top three mistakes that I see people make all the time uh, that can royally screw up your books and you won't be able to really understand your financial statements. Okay. First thing, and I've gone over this one in another video because it's just so vitally important, are credit cards, okay? Now, let's take a scenario when you get a bill, uh, just a normal bill, let's say it's a utility bill or office supplies or rent or whatever it is, you're gonna typically go into enter bills and you're gonna go here and you're gonna type in the vendor and the amount and the due date, etc. Okay, now what people do with credit cards is they do the same thing. And they go in and they go into enter bills and they say, okay, let's say, I think there's a, yeah, QuickBooks MasterCard. And they go in and they say, okay, amount due, well, the minimum payment due is $129. Um, you know, don't worry about that I had 4,000 of charges. The minimum due is 129 bucks. And they usually put this to, office supplies or some other expense. I don't know. They just make something up. Okay, you don't do it this way. Do not put your credit card in as a bill like this. Okay, what you want to do is you want to go in and you want to enter your credit card charges. Okay, so how do you do that? Okay, real simple here. Two ways. You can go to the banking drop down menu. Uh, and you can go to enter credit card charges or you can go down here and click on enter credit card charges. Okay, so a credit card charge, what you're going to do is you're going to take your statement, you're going to enter the charges one by one. You know, let's say that uh, we purchased from Daigle Lighting. We don't have to worry about the open purchase orders, you know, $52.99. And let's just say this was just office supplies. Okay. Hit save and new. You're going to enter the next credit card charge, the next credit card charge, the next credit card charge, etc. Until you get all of your credit card charges into QuickBooks this way. Then what you're going to do is you're going to go to banking and you're going to reconcile the credit card. Just like you reconcile the checking account, you're going to reconcile the credit card. Okay? So based on your statement that you have in front of you, you're going to put in your ending balance. You're going to put in your finance charges. Okay, so let's just say that the ending balance is 500 bucks. No finance charges. And you're going to mark off, okay, which ones cleared. In this example, we're just using the cleared balance of 500, so it balances right now. So let's just say reconcile now, okay? It's going to ask you, do you want to enter a bill for payment later or write a check for now? If we're going to enter a bill, this is how you enter the bill for the credit card. Okay? So let's say it's going to pre-fill, you know, it's Cal Gas and Electric in this case. Congratulations, you reconciled. Here, it's going to put in the full balance. And you want to change that. If you're only paying the minimum payment, change it. And hit save and close. Now what this does is it's going to record the full amount. It's going to record all those credit card charges in your books. It's going to show the liability for the full amount of the credit card, but the bill is only going to be for the minimum payment. So now you're tracking the balance of your credit card and you're getting all the expenses on the books, which are all the charges you made. Okay. So that is mistake. Number one is entering just a bill for a credit card statement. When it comes in, don't do that. Enter your credit card charges, reconcile the card, then enter a bill. Okay. Second mistake I see all the time is properly recording assets that are purchased. Okay. Now, what do I mean by that? Okay. Let's say that your business goes and buys a vehicle. 
and it costs twenty thousand dollars and you write a check for a thousand bucks to put down and you finance the balance of nineteen thousand dollars how do you record that in quickbooks okay here's what most people do they'll go and they'll say banking write checks and they're gonna make the, the down payment check, you know, let, let's, I don't know. So Ford, we'll do a quick ad for Ford. And they'll put a thousand bucks and they're gonna put some kind of automobile expense. In this case, automobile, yeah, it's an expense and you know, but they might just put automobile expense. They might go up here and put it as an asset, you know, under vehicles and they'll just record the thousand bucks. And then when the bill comes in each month for the loan, they just put that to the same account. Wrong, wrong, wrong. Don't do it this way. It just causes problems and you're, you're understating your assets, understating your liabilities, okay? And you may be overstating your expenses. All right, so here's what you wanna do. Okay, I don't wanna save this. So you buy a vehicle, okay? You've gotta record the full amount. Okay, so there, there's three aspects to this. There's three things going on. You're, you're getting rid of cash of a thousand bucks. You have a new loan of 19,000. And now you have a vehicle that's 20, that costs 20. Okay, so we have to put that on the books. You can do it through a journal entry, but a lot of people aren't really comfortable with the journal entry. Okay, so I'm gonna show you how to do it through the banking right checks. And this can get confusing. So, you know, get help if you don't understand how to do this whether it's your own CPA or, or whoever it is, somebody else that knows how to do this, find out. Okay, so let's say we buy this vehicle. We're gonna say the check's for a thousand bucks, okay? And what you're gonna do down here is you're gonna say vehicles, which is the fixed asset, okay, is 20. And now keep in mind this area down here in this tab has to equal this. And then you're gonna say, and I'm gonna make this account because there's not one in there. We're gonna call this a loan. And for some reason, QuickBooks calls loans other current liabilities. This is a long-term liability, okay? And it's gonna be negative 19, okay? I know that sounds weird showing it as a negative, but trust me. So the balance now is a thousand bucks. Okay, save and close and that's it. All right, so what did I do? Let me, let me go over and show you in the chart of accounts here. Okay, so I reduced this by a thousand bucks, the checking account that it came out of. Vehicles, I can show you here, went up by 20,000 right there. Okay, and down below, we have a Ford loan for 19,000 bucks, voila. You've just recorded the asset correctly on the books. Okay, so that's mistake number two. Mistake number three, payments on that loan. Okay, so you get a bill for your Ford loan of 19,000 bucks. Let's say your payment is 500 bucks a month for 38 months, you know, whatever, whatever the payment is. Well, each of those payments of 500 bucks represents some principal, the principal being the 19,000 on the loan, and some of it would be interest, unless you have a 0% interest loan, okay? So how do you record this? Well, on each bill, they should break out the payment between principal and interest. So your first bill might be, you know, $400 principal, $100 interest. Your second bill might be $401 principal, $99 interest third, so on and so forth. You know, the, the interest on an amortizing loan goes down over the life of the loan, okay? So you wanna break that out on each payment, okay? So we get the bill. We go to enter bills, and let's say that the vendor is Ford, and we get our bill for 500 bucks, okay? These accounts are wrong, so let me uh, delete that line. So Ford loan, okay, so this is where we put the principal to that liability, that loan, that, that Ford loan balance. So let's say it's 400 bucks. And the other part is gonna be interest expense for 100, okay? So the mistake I see people make is they will either put it all to the loan, if they've recorded the loan, they'll put it all to interest, or they will put it all to automobile expense. 
okay? This is incorrect, don't do this. You're messing up your books. All right, so each payment you wanna break out according to the bill between principal and interest. Now, a lot of times they don't break it out. Okay, so what do you do? I, I simply just call the finance company and say, hey, I need an amortization schedule. I need you to provide a breakout of the principal and interest on this, okay? And it's gonna make the accountant's job a lot easier at the end of the year because your loan balance will tie to what the finance company says. Your interest expense will be you know, correct in your profit and loss statement and all will be good. You'll have good financial statements, okay? So make sure that you record loan payments correctly. It doesn't have to be a vehicle. It can be any loan that you get, okay? Uh, same thing with recording the assets. It doesn't have to be a vehicle. It can be any asset you purchase, okay? So hopefully this helped. These top three mistakes, some of the biggest mistakes that I see that people make, uh, these three things, if you do them correctly, will take you a long way to getting the right books and understanding the profitability of your business, which ultimately, that's the goal here. Keep track of your business. It's not just about accounting and getting the right tax returns. It's about being able to analyze your business, understanding what's going on, so that you can make good business decisions to grow your company and hopefully make more money. All right, so that's it. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Uh, you know, if you did, subscribe to our YouTube channel here. Uh, or head over to qbuniversity.org. We have some other free videos there. And we also have 38 pretty awesome videos, if I must say so myself, uh, on how to use QuickBooks step-by-step. -step. Take care. Talk to you soon.